These lines will create a box. This box will be one of numerous panels in a comic book. But how do you know the appropriate size to use? I'm going to share the answer with you. But first, you'll have to understand how to control time. I, I honestly can't believe this is the last one. And I want to thank my partners DC, home of the world's greatest superheroes and supervillains, and Varsity Tutors, contributors to all of the curious minds on this planet, to bring you our final live class to close out this summer program on the art of creating comic books. This is it, this is the final live class, and in it, I'll be sharing with you the methods I use to tell a story in comic books. It's honestly quite a nuanced thing, and this is a topic that I've wanted to create a video about for a long time. So I couldn't be happier that this subject will close out the summer program. The finale is live on August 14th. You can't miss this class, especially since it's free to participate. And I'm gonna put the link down below, sign up, and let's tackle this mysterious topic of storytelling together. But for now, I'm gonna share something, something that took me over 20 years to learn. And I'll try to pass this knowledge on in about five minutes. I got the recipe, never gonna let any up get the best of me Thought it was distance, but haters is next to me Talk to the spirit, you know I've been heavenly Company definitely show your trajectory This ain't it, this cause I say it respectfully Every story has a beat, both from a larger and a much smaller scale Now, when we look at these panels, we have to look at them as units of time A slim panel is meant to be read quickly the art should share a relatively short amount of information for the reader to take in. A medium-sized panel will take a bit more time to read and digest, so we can populate it with a bit more information. Now, a large panel will demand more time from the reader and will usually contain either more information in the word balloons or the image will contain more visual information for the reader to take in. Like right now, you're probably looking all around me to see what kind of junk I have in my studio. This is the basic premise of using panels, but there's more to it than this. What we're gonna do is rewind back to when I said, you'll have to understand how to control time. When you zoom out and look at a comic book page as a whole and not as individual panels, you'll begin to see the shapes and sizes of the panels as if they were musical notes. The smaller the panel, the shorter or quieter the beat. So of course, the larger the panel, the louder the beat. The reason why we want to look at these panels and these pages as if they were musical notes is because every piece of music has a rise and fall. And to be a great storyteller, you must know how to create rising tension. Now, I want you to look at these panels and listen to a simple three beat rhythm inside your head. Tick, tick, boom. Tick, tick, boom. Tick, tick, boom. Tick, tick, ka Splash page. <laughs> By understanding rhythm and controlling the speed of information you're sharing with the audience, you can create tension and drama. And you can achieve all of this by controlling time. I often joke that only 30% of my job is drawing and the other 70% is storytelling. It's such a crucial aspect of being a comic book artist. Now, here's the crazy thing. These panels are just the beginning of your storytelling journey. and. I haven't even shared with you what goes inside of them. So if you want to know more, sign up in the link down below. The final live class of the summer is on August 14th. Don't miss this class. I'll see you all. Take, take, come. Splash page. <laughs>